We'd like to welcome everyone that's here today for the Berwick Citizenship Recognition Dinner. Thanks to everyone who has worked so hard to prepare this. And we'd like to introduce our honored guests that are here with us today. Uh, it's Mark Lawrence, our state senator here. I don't see him. Mark Lawrence? No. Uh, I'd like to rep uh, recognize Beth and Edward O'Connor. Beth is our state representative. Uh, our town manager, James Bellissimo. The chairman of our Berwick Town Selectman is Tom Wright. Tom? Our Berwick Select person is Mark Pendergrass. Is Mark here? I haven't seen him. I don't see Mark. Linda Corliss. Linda. And Mike Latour. We are also very privileged to have the state commander for uh, the American Legion, Deborah Couture, and her husband, Greg, who's a finance officer. We are also privileged to have seven former Citizens of the Year in attendance. Uh, when I call your names, if you could please stand. Barbara Martin. Dana Hall. You see Dana. Paul Lapierre. Ron Vigu. Uh, Tony Sincata is not able to be with us tonight, but we all love and respect Tony. Uh, Frank Underwood. 2015. And Kathy Sheedy. Thank you, Kathy. Big round for all of these. Things. Now, if uh, we would all stand, please, and I'm going to ask the, to uncover and uh, introduce Chaplain Reverend Rose Brown from the VFW South Berwick Post to do our invocation. <clears throat> Would you please um, just join me in bowing our heads for a word of prayer for the blessing tonight. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, from whom all blessings flow, with grateful hearts we humble, humbly acknowledge you as the giver of life. Thank you for the guidance, wisdom, and freedoms we enjoy, and for reminding us that without you, our efforts are in vain. We thank you for this special occasion, which brings us together to pay tribute and honor to citizens of this town and surrounding community, and for their contributions to the betterment of all. Please bless the American Legion, Charles S. Hatch, post number 79, for all the legwork in organizing this event and uh, for Chef Justin Canton and the team in their preparation of this banquet. Now, Heavenly Father, we just pray that, you, that we can enjoy this dinner together and the program to follow with your blessing. Nourish our bodies and uplift our spirits as we fellowship together. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Cover. We'll now pledge allegiance to the flag. Present, huh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, huh. You may be seated. We are going to now begin, proceed with our dinner. I would like the...
first responders, uh, to please go first in line. I know there's a couple of calls in the fire department, uh, so if you could please make your way to the buffet line. Uh, all the firemen and police officers, please. I could have your attention, please. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, our chef and his crew today, Justin Canton. Justin has uh, done a wonderful job here. Uh, you may know of him. Uh, I new uh, restaurant, new take on an old place in Berwick. He's now mainly Yokes, is that correct? Local Yokes. And their omelets are to die for and it will absolutely, two meals, you cannot eat, eat it at one setting. And it was uh, absolutely excellent. excellent. I had the California omelet and it was really, really good. And uh, we thank him and uh, he does a lot of uh, and I put a plug in for him. If you want to have a great breakfast or a great meal, check him out over there. And he also is very veteran friendly. Uh, he also uh, hosts the VFW South Berwick Post, uh, our monthly meetings. I'm also a member of that post. And we're grateful for him uh, continuing on and allowing us when Mayo's uh, finally decided to hang up their shingles and they took it over. He slid right in and we didn't miss a step with being able to meet. And Jeff Chase, you're here. Uh, where are you, Jeff? Out in the back, I'd like to acknowledge him, VFW commander for the South Berwick Post, and thank you for being here, former commander of Post 79 as well. And I know it was uh, great to have uh, uh, a place for us to meet uh, for the VFW as well. So if we are Everyone is back in their seat. We'd like to continue on now with the other part of our purpose for being here is the presentation of awards. <laughs> Somebody really liked that. <laughs> Through the years, Berwick has been blessed to have both citizens and businesses volunteer their time, talent, and materials to make our public areas look green and vibrant. Despite sometimes unpredictable weather and an ongoing pandemic, over the past year, several Berwick residents donated personal time to plant flowers in several key areas throughout the town. Uh, would Ms. Drew McCormick please come to the podium? But now I'd like to recognize Rick Rains. Yeah. Stand right there, Rick. I'll be right up there in a second. 
The town of Berwick is most fortunate to have a strong scouting history due in large part to the adults and parents who as scout leaders teach our children how to become good citizens. One of these leaders is with us tonight. I'd like to ask Rick to come forward. <laughs> in recognition and appreciation of 17 years of service and involvement with the Boy Scouts of America, through your leadership in the Boy Scout program, you touched the lives of hundreds of young men and helped them build character and become good citizens and leaders in their own right. As Scoutmaster of Berwick Troop 313, you guided 17 young men uh, to the achievement of Eagle Scout, the highest rank in scouting. Your work and dedication contributed to the advancement and success of scouting in Berwick and continues to provide a great service to Berwick parents and youth our community, state, and nation. Presented at Berwick, Maine on this 30th day of April 2022 by Charles S. Hatch Post 79, Department of Maine, American Legion. <laughs> Brian English Commander, Phil Jenks Admiral. Thank you. Um, today, we have a presentation for the Boston Kane Award for the town of Berwick. Uh, this is honored to the oldest resident of the town. Uh, she is not able to be with us today. Lillian Brown is Berwick's oldest citizen, but I would like for her, um, is it daughter that's here today with us to take the award on her behalf? Is she here? I work at the Berwick Town Hall, and you are? Lillian Brown. And she lives here in Berwick Meadows. And we're here today with Andy Buckman from the American Legion in the town hall. Mm -hmm. fully, fully dressed for us. And we are here to present you with the Boston Post Cane Certificate. And I'm going to give you a little information about the Cane Certificate first, um, since I had to look it up to find out. In 1909, so it was a long time ago, um, the Boston Post newspaper distributed, distributed 700 canes to New England towns. Hmm. They did it as a gimmick to increase their subscription. Yep. And they wanted it to go to the oldest person, and then they would put that in the paper, and people would buy the paper to see who the oldest person was. So it was a gimmick to increase their sales. Um, the cane itself is made of ebony, and it has a gold, 14 karat gold handle on the end. And the town of Berwick's cane is under lock and key at the town hall on display. You can see it. Oh. But they used to give it to people, and then the cane sometimes wouldn't come back. Mm -hmm. So they decided not to give the cane anymore. But they still have it. And also there's a plaque next to the cane of every person who's received it, this certificate. Um, so, started in, in 1930, women were added. So you qualify now. <laughs> the Boston Post also became one of the most successful newspapers of the 19th century. Uh, they had a um, circulation of more than 600,000. So it became a big deal at the time. So that's, yeah. that's enough history, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So you, because you are the oldest person in Berwick right now that we could find. Wow. Yes. You receive now the Boston Post Cane Certificate uh, from the town of Berwick, presented to you in a rep symbolic representation. So this you get. Now, we have a nicer one coming to you, but I didn't have time to get that. Very so you nice. will be getting this, and it's given to you on behalf of the town. We're very proud. You are 98 right now, and you will be 99 in June? 14th. June 14th. So... Congratulations. This is your plaque. Thank you. You're very official. Oh, <laughs> thank you, everybody. So from now on, any parade we have, you get to ride in. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born in Skowhegan, Maine. That's it? 99 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> So what juicy stories can you tell us about Berwick? Berwick, 
I like Berwick. I've always loved Berwick. I came here in 1950, and I've been here ever since. And you raised a family here? Yeah. So part of it. Part of it here, part of it in the Auburn, Maine. And you told me once what you did when the kids didn't want to go to school. What I, oh, what I did to them? I told them just straight upstairs, get right back in bed and stay there. <laughs> <laughs> well, huh? I'd rather do that than have them running around. I, I, I agree Out 100%. Running around. Yeah. At least you knew where they were. Yes. They didn't get brought home by a police officer. Yeah, <laughs> right. How, how many children did you have? Seven. Seven? Seven. Oh. I'd lock them all in their rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Uh, yeah. How'd you keep track of them all? I did. Well, did you live on a farm? Huh? Did you live on a farm or anything like that? Well, we lived on uh, Brooks's farm. My husband and I used to do chores for Ruby Brooks. Yes, Ruby Brooks. That rings a bell. Yeah. yeah. Um, what other things do you remember about Berwick? I always stayed home, mind my business. Oh, okay. <laughs> what fun is that? Uh, that's not, not much <laughs> no fun. fun. Not not much fun, but I did. Did you go to town meetings and things like that? No. Didn't stand up in the back oh, and scream yes, and yell. Oh yes, I did once in a while. Did Did you ever ride a horse? I tried. You tried? Yes, I did. What happened? I got slid off of it. <laughs> you slid off or got thrown off? Yeah. <laughs> No, he, I slid off. My husband didn't get the saddle on right. And did I he do off. that on purpose? I don't think so. <laughs> I hope he didn't. I hope he didn't. <laughs> Jeez, so. <laughs> so that was your only time That's trying the a first, horse? first time I tried to ride it. And the and last. It fell off. And the last time. Yep. <laughs> that was the first and the last time, yes. Yep. What happened when you had Patrick in school? Oh, we had a great big uh, snowstorm. And my mother, my husband brought my mother in on some uh, snowshoes yeah. into the house. That's the only way he could get her from the road to, my, to the house. Was on snowshoes? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I was more or less a stale homo. Oh, it took, sounds like it. With what, took, seven? Took care of my children. With seven kids, you'd have to stay at home. Yeah. What did your husband do for work? Name me odd. Oh. No, well, I probably didn't graduated. have too she excited a lot. She never actually graduated from high school. She kept going, but every time somebody needed her, her mother would mm -hmm. pull her out. Did so. you hear what she's saying? No. Mm -hmm. She said you never got to finish high school because every time somebody needed you, you got pulled out of high school to help. Yeah. And then you ended up working at the hospital after your husband died for 19 years. I did. Wow. Oh. Yeah. What's, what, what, how, how come you live so long? What's the key? What's the magic ingredient I, to live so I long? I don't know. I have, uh, I have sat home sometimes and thought about that. Maybe it's having and, seven kids. And, and asked myself, why am I here and everybody else is gone? There must be some reason for it. So you could be here today. Right. There you go. There you go. You got it. <laughs> You're not done telling your story. Yeah. Well. Well, I'm glad to be here today because I, I have been laid up for a while. Yes, I'm glad you're here too. Yeah. Very glad. What advice do you give people? Hmm? What advice would you give people? What advice do you give your grandkids? What advice would I give yeah. my grandkids? Well, just they just have to live from day to day and do what's right. Yeah. What's your favorite place? Of all the places you've been and everything you've seen, where's your favorite place? Berwick. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even have to tell you that ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so I, glad that we're here. But I do like Berwick. The people are wonderful, especially right here at this place. 
Very nice. Everybody's so very, nice. It's a very nice family. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I'm so glad we had today oh. and that you're here with all your friends, okay. your, your family right here. Yeah. And we have nice weather. It's a great day. That's right. Wonderful. Lisa Houston, or Lisa, would you like to take the war on behalf of her? That's my mom. Oh, I understand. Well, two. Two. <laughs> and this one we have on the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I would like uh, to have my dear friend with the camera come over here for a moment. Robert? Yes, sir. Stand right over there for a second. Today I'd like to present a very special award to a very special guy. When you were nominated, Rob. It was absolutely unanimous, and no one could even consider anyone else once your name was brought up. Mark Pilgrim was raised in Kittery and served his country for 22 years, rising to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Army. This is not Mark, by the way. This is Robert Place. But talking about Mark, his service included two tours in Vietnam, and upon retirement, Mark and his wife, returned, his wife Anne returned to Maine in 2003 and settled here in Berwick. We are fortunate to have Ann, are you here? Is here with us, uh, and her daughter Egan. Mark was heavily involved in the community and is a member of the American Legion, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, a peace greeter, and an active member of Berwick Winter Farmers Market Committees. And he commanded post 79, Charles S. Hatch Post, from 2012 to 2015. We lost Mark unexpectedly in the fall of 2016 and we decided to honor his service and legacy by establishing the Commander Mark T. Pilgrim Americanism Award in his memory. So today, the award is presented by our post to the Berwick citizens who will go above and beyond the call of duty in service to the community. Past recipients are, include Chris Bisson, Catherine Locke, and Roseanne Martin. But it, today, it's my honor to present this year's Americanism Award to Robert Place. Robert, you go. Robert served 17 years as historian for the Post 79. 13 of those years, he was the Department of Maine uh, Historian of the Year. 13 out of 17 years straight. He took last year off due to some personal issues that he had to deal with, fighting really hard. For him. He's still battling, but he came up to me at our last meeting and said, I'm back and I want to go back into that historian position. And, it, and he's here today, and we thank you forever. Robert, don't leave yet. We have something else for you. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Beth O'Connor, our, our main representative. Thank you. So you are the salt of the earth, and it is such a pleasure to give you this legislative sentiment. And if you don't mind, I would like to read it to you and to the rest of the folks. Thank you. Be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Robert K. Place of North Berwick, who received the Mark T. Pilgrim Americanism Award from the American Legion Charles S. Hatch Post 79 in recognition of his outstanding service, dedication, and spirit of patriotism.
We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this ex official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 130th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. And we want to thank you deeply for everything that you do for this town and for the people of this country. And it's a pleasure to know you. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to recognize our town manager at this time, James Bellissimo, to make a presentation to, uh, of his own. Thank you very much. Uh, what a wonderful event this is. Um, it's, uh, it's important to recognize what makes Berwick a special place to live and work in. My, Predecessor Steve Eldridge would often comment to me how unique of a town Berwick is because of its people. This uh, volunteer spirit in Berwick is unique, and this spirit is reflected in our volunteers, our board members, and departments. Tonight, I have the honor and privilege to recognize our first responders. Throughout this pandemic, with constant CDC updates, policy changes, and COVID variants, not once did I ever feel out of step with either department, and that's th thanks to their great leadership. We are seeing the needs of our community evolve rapidly over, over the past few years. We are seeing new types of emerging challenges that need to be met real time. And thanks to the leadership of both departments, we have been able to maintain a semblance of normalcy in uncertain times. So at this time, I'd like to recognize the Berwick Police Department. In recognition and appreciation of your commendable and dedicated service to our community as Berwick's finest first responders, you put yourself in harm's way daily with dedication and courage. You are the ones who protect and serve, uphold and enforce the law of impartiality, protect life, liberty, property, human rights, and the dignity of the public. You serve with unparalleled honor and devotion. Working tirelessly during a period marked by a global pandemic, you have kept the borough community a safer place to live, work, and play. We are all able to rest easy at night because you have the watch. Never forget the difference you make every day. Each and every one of you is greatly appreciated. Thank you. If I may. And I'd also like to uh, acknowledge uh, our chief of police, uh, Tim Town, uh, recently lost uh, his father, and uh, he was uh, an honored member of our post, and we we're grateful for his service to his country, and we we're grateful for a family that uh, served this community as well, and uh, we remember him with honor, Tim. And now I'd like to call up the Berwick Fire Department. In recognition and appreciation of your commendable and dedicated service to our community as Berwick's finest first responders, the ones who go where others will not go, the ones who protect and safeguard our lives and our homes, the ones who show compassion and concern for those who suffer illness or loss, the ones who are the first in and last out, working tirelessly during a period marked by a global pandemic, you willingly answered the call time and again, saving lives and livelihoods. 
We're able to rest easy at night because you have the watch. Never forget the difference you make every day. Each and every one of you is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, James. We would be remiss if we did not also acknowledge the hard work of those Berwick residents who care deeply about the community in which they live and who often labor sight unseen to enhance and improve our public spaces. One person stands out in particular. Would Cyrus Morgan please come forward? Cyrus, this is a certificate of appreciation. This certificate is gratefully presented to Cyrus Morgan in recognition and appreciation for your outstanding contributions to the town and citizens of Berwick by repairing and enhancing the Penny Pond Trail and by volunteering time to several town projects and events. By repairing the trail, you maintained a safe and scenic place for Berwick families and visitors to enjoy the best that nature has to offer. The incredibly generous donation of your time, talent, and labor is a gift that will keep giving for many seasons to come. Your personal involvement in the Berwick Farmers Market and the Envision Berwick Committee and Subcommittees reveals your strong community spirit and your desire to make Berwick a better place to live, work, and play. For this and much more, we salute you as Berwick's Volunteer of the Year, presented at Berwick, Maine on this 30th day of April 2022 by Charles S. Hatch Post 79, Department of Maine, American Legion, Signed, Ryan English, Commander, and Philip Jinks, Adjutant. I'd like to introduce my first Vice Commander. What's your name? Paul. Well, the big joke is, is how many Pauls do we have in, in the post? And we, the new District Commander is also a Paul, so he's Paul number one. And this is oh, Paul number two. <laughs> Paul Amatucci, our vice commander, first vice commander. I got, I got a promotion. I was Paul four about three weeks ago, so that's good. Uh, now it, it gives me great pleasure to be standing here tonight to, um, to talk about the Business of the Year Award. Since the start of their business in Berwick in the year 2000 as a golf course, and expanding in 2008 with the building of the Red Barn Function Center, this company has exemplified what it means to be a good corporate citizen of the community at large. Aside from their business vision to build and execute a beautiful and friendly golf course and function center, the entire Flint, Flynn family in total is hands-on every day of the year in maintaining and expanding their business and reaching out in so many ways to so many segments of our community. With continued donations to local community charities and groups, our Berwick American Legion Post 79 being one, the Berwick Car Show, Noble High School, and many of their sports programs, Project Graduation, Knights of Columbus, Area Veterans Organizations and Youth Programs, there is no end to the openness and spirit of community than has been exemplified by the Links at Outlook, their dedicated employees, the Flynn family, and those of us who have enjoyed their welcoming and friendly way of doing business. When they built their Red Barn Function Center, they even celebrated the fact that the course and buildings cut across both town lines of Berwick and South Berwick. They named one of the bars the Berwick Bar, and while naming the other the South Berwick Bar because of their locations in both towns. It is a real pleasure to see this strong and giving company run by a longtime local family and being so dedicated to this beautiful and historic 
part of Maine. Tonight we celebrate their business and the way they operate it and how they give back to our community. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Berwick Business of the Year, the Lynx at Outlook. John Flynn, will you please step up? Coming to the uh, ultimate of the awards that, that is given today, and it's my honor to recognize a past commander of our post and a former Citizen of the Year, Ron Vigu, to make the presentation for Citizen of the Year. Let me just give you some of the reasons that uh, he was selected. In, 19, in 2014, Andy undertook the challenge of organizing our car show in downtown Berwick here. He requested funds and assistance of his fellow members from the local Ameri American Legion Post. Then he approached the Board of Selectmen to solicit the town's cooperation to help fund and to conduct the car show at the town hall. Andy spent countless hours traveling many miles to solicit sponsors to defray the cost of conducting the car show. He developed and attended to all the details of putting on the car show, distributed a huge amount of flyers advertising the car show while attending numerous car shows in Maine and in New Hampshire. He purchased all the fruit products, designed the t-shirts, designed the plaques, and solicited the assistance of our police department to develop the traffic patterns during the conduct of the car show. He also engaged our disc jockey for music, and finally, he got us together as committee members to help to conduct the car show. It's been a great community event since 2014. And he also has been a driving force in upgrading the Veterans Park. He solicited a local welder to donate the material for the new flagpoles and attended to the installation of the new flagpole. He then designed that sign that's up there at the Veterans Park and got his good friend Steve to build it for us and design and paint it for us. When needed, Andy personally attended to the watering of the flowers at the Veterans Park. This task caused him to coordinate with Town Public Work Department to install a water line to the park. He then solicited the services of a local contractor who donated his time and machinery to install the water line. Andy was highly involved in his grandson, Brandon, uh, I would say Brandon, but it's Jarrett, project <laughs> resulting in the memorial stone being elect, erected to honor Berwick's only Medal of Honor winner in the, uh, in the Civil War. And he also spearheaded the project resulting in the establishment of a memorial plaque for Mrs. Levine, who you remember, she watered those flowers for many years. God bless her. Finally, Andy, on behalf of American Legion Post 79, has been the liaison with the town to provide assistance not only for needy veterans, but also to local veterans. Where's that plaque? <laughs> I just want to read what's on the plaque. In recognition of continuous outstanding community service and dedication to the town of Berwick, your insight creativity, and the initiative resulted in long-lasting enhancement 
to our public areas and improve the quality of life of neighbors, veterans, and the greater borough community. Now, before I give him the plaque, Let's delve into some other aspects of Andy's life. Who? I'll get to there. Right. No problem. No. I'll take that. No problem. For the past seven years, he's been at the town hall so often that Patty, our town clerk, has made a proposal to call the lobby. Andy's Lounge, yeah. <laughs> but wait, where was he before these last seven to 10 years? As a young father to his two young daughters, he was very active in their lives, helping to coach some of the sports teams and school events they participated in. They participated in. Then something drastic happened. Judy, his wife, became town clerk. She told Andy, don't you go near the town hall as long as I'm the town clerk. Another thing, ever since Dana Hall started the bus demolition derby at the Rochester Fair, you've seen those buses in front of Hall Brothers and up by Dana's, Andy has always wanted to drive one of those buses. Last month, and he took his first step to accomplish his goal. He had his 67 Dodge Coronet and was driving out of the Dairy Delight parking lot and he saw an approaching car. And he thought, man, this is when I can practice avoiding crashes at the demolition derby. <laughs> <laughs> Off he darted out onto, that, <laughs> onto School Street and realizing he wasn't going to beat the car, he actually experienced what happens at a demolition derby. <laughs> His little Dodge, 67 Dodge Coronet, now needs a new fender and a new bumper. <laughs> I'm not the only one that has some stories about, Bear, about Andy. Barry, where are you, Barry? Barry Stevens worked at Tri-City Dodge with Andy for years. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I've known this guy for 45 years, maybe more. Worked with him 20 years uh, in the same shop. Tonight's subject is his wallet, or the actual sighting of it. <laughs> All right, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I really have. Uh, in all the years, I think I've seen his wallet only two or three times. Two or three times, and that's when I snuck up on him. He was like this. He also counts his money away from prying eyes. I've seen him in action. Lots of ones showing bigger ones, bigger bills out of sight where they can't be seen. Always flashes one dollar bills, tells me he's poor. <laughs> he must have been a bill collector in his past life. When he shows up, you know he's looking for a touch. Re reminds me of Frank Hall. Anyone remember Frank Hall? Oh yeah. Yeah. He always showed up with little yellow tickets in his pocket. You knew you had to reach for money. He's getting like that. I saw the wallet recently, same one from some 40 years ago. One full type hinge in the middle showed very little signs of wear. <laughs> You've always been the citizen of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Then I'm going to call on his lifelong friend, Dick Hall, for a couple of stories. Yeah, I'm especially glad to be here tonight. Um, to honor Andy, uh, who for more than 50 years has been like a brother to me. I mean, we have done so many things. Um, he's being applauded tonight for the many civic accomplishments he has accomplished uh, since uh, retiring and getting involved in the efforts of the uh, Charles S. Hatch Post 79. Um, Andy has stood out in this organization, and it's great that we dedicate this evening to him. Andy's dedication to family and friends has always been strong over the years. He has helped me and others, often during personal emergencies 
and more generally with advice on where to get the best used car deal when transportation needs suddenly changed. I mean, a lot of people with kids got their cars through Andy. Um, Andy and I have done so many projects together for each other that I cannot imagine what the cumulative number would be. Uh, wives could probably assess it better by who got hurt. Uh, one of us usually did. <laughs> he likes camping, the outdoors. He used to like fishing. Uh, when we went fishing, we usually caught something. And once, I caught him. I cast a line back and got it caught on something, yanked on it, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I caught on something. He said, yeah, me. <laughs> well, as I remember, Judy got the hook out all right. And Andy forgave me. He's a forgiving guy. Uh, he never held this against me, even though I bragged that I was the only one, only one who caught something that day. <laughs> but he has another talent. Andy's a born leader. He, can, he, he showed it by his award tonight. Uh, but in 2016, we went cross country to visit national parks. We had two motorhomes. My first motorhome, my first trip. I was a newbie. When we left, Andy, being the leader, decided that as he was towing a car, that I should take the lead on this three month trip. I wasn't sure that was a good idea. I was a newbie at this and I never even checked into a campground before where he had been doing it for 20 years. But as a good leader, he encouraged me to step up and make it happen. Well, I think what I did was just fine. We were only in New York State when we found ourselves going through the most beautiful country you can imagine. Over dirt roads, wooden bridges, through farmyards, and acres of rolling green. Over dirt roads, I mean, he was on the radio, what are you going? Where are you going? He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm following my GPS. His GPS didn't agree with mine. <laughs> Anyways, we got back to some hot top roads and discovered that my GPS was set on shortest route passenger car. <laughs> Lucky me, we didn't fall through anything or break anything. The rest of the trip was a dream. He kept me on a shorter leash in my wanderings and he only had to unhook his car to turn around a few times during the rest of the trip. It was an adventure we hoped it would be and I recommend it as a bucket list item for any couples who can stand being together for weeks on end. <laughs> I would do it again. We do live in a great, beautiful country, and few get to see what a wonder it is to behold. All banner aside, Andy, Donna and I are so thankful that you and Judy have been a wonderful part of our journey through a large part of our lives. Donna and I sincerely congratulate you on your award tonight, which is so well deserved. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> In closing, I just want to mention that Andy and I have grown close these past few years. One would never realize that Andy has a religious side. We would do projects in my shop, and he and I would have lengthy discussions about certain gospel passages. One thing that struck me was how often Andy would speak of heaven hoping and praying to get there, to hear, see his mom, his brother, and mostly his sister, whom he misses a lot. After hearing speak about his desire to get to heaven a few times, I reminded him about some of his past not so nice deeds that he had shared with me. He thought for a second and then said to me, well, if I don't get to heaven, and end up in the other place, I'll still have a lot of friends there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Berwick's 2022 Citizen of the Year, Andrew Lewis Buckman.
today with Andy Buckman, who has been chosen as Citizen of the Year this year for Berwick. We're going to learn a little bit about Andy and the things that he's been involved in and the reasons he chooses to volunteer in our community and give back in so many ways. Andy, I'm so glad you joined us today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how long have you lived in Berwick? Um, my wife and I were married in 66. Mm -hmm. I got out of the service in 68 which we moved, I moved into town then. My wife is a lifelong resident of Berwick. And what is her name, please? Her name was Judith Jones at that time. Okay. Uh, and uh, her, her family was involved with the town of Berwick from day one, I think. You know, I can't, I can't tell you how long they've been here, but they've been here a long time. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then after we were married, we settled, I settled here in Berwick. And uh, from that point, it was all, you know, great going because this town is a fabulous place to live. Uh, I mean, the people work together, they're friendly. Uh, the businesses in the town are overwhelmingly good. Uh, they have supported me in many ways in all of our activities that I have done. Um, I started in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I became a member of the Berwick uh, uh, Recreation Department. That's where you started, was recreation? Yes, I started in recreation. Yes, uh, and... Uh, from there, it was it was a rewarding type uh, effort you know, on my part. Uh, myself and my wife were both members of the committee, uh, along with Dick and Judy LaJoy and uh, Scott Waldron, who was uh, all members, uh, all residents of the town, I should say. And uh, from that point, uh, like I said, we started certain programs that are still in effect today. Uh, the next thing that I moved on to after that was that I started a girls softball league, which we didn't have in this town. And I ran that for another 12 years and then continued, because uh, I'm a, a, a member of the American Legion post-79, here in town, um, and of course, again, that became really my volunteering type thing. They got me going, and I continued with the Legion, volunteering and doing different things. Um, some of the programs that we've done is a Veterans Park, which the town was heavily involved with us. Uh, in this project. Um, everything that, uh, actually every project that I've been involved with, the town also has been involved with. So uh, I am the li liaison from the Legion to the town and we work very closely together. Um, and again, uh, I can't emphasize the effort that is put in by the businesses in this town too that that help it it makes it easy to be a volunteer in this town uh, because there's so much support uh, the town is just like one one big family you know is as far as I'm concerned I mean it it's just been fabulous I can't say enough so you've been involved in quite a few things what's your favorite activity or event of the year I would say that this year I was involved with my grandson. Uh, he became an Eagle Scout this year. And he did a project for the Legion for his Eagle Scout Award, which was a Civil War veteran who got the Congressional Medal of Honor from Berwick. And we put a monument up, well, 
I say we, he put a monument up in the, in, at the Veterans Park that honor in this uh, Civil War veteran. So uh, that has been, I would say, watching the scouts work as hard. You know, it was a, even though it was his project, he kind of managed it. The, the group of Boy Scouts worked together to put this monument up. What a fabulous job. I mean, and that way I would have to say was my most touching uh, volunteer that I was involved with this year. But again, I didn't do any of the work, but I did a lot of heavy looking on. <laughs> now, you have also organized the annual car show, which is a huge success in Berwick and has brought in all kinds of people to um, our community. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how that started? Well, again, this started uh, all with the efforts of the town because the town was doing a 300th anniversary uh, in 2013, uh, and they were looking for something to fill a slot uh, in the program. Um, so I got together with them, uh, you know, town members, Lisa Houston mainly, uh, and uh, it started. We, she asked me if there was something, you know, the Legion could do. So uh, I took over, and from that point on, it became one of the most successful car shows that we've had. Last year was probably uh, the biggest one that we had with over 161 cars at the show and um, you know it was it's been a great draw we, uh, the number of people I, I really couldn't tell you the number of people because it's wall to wall people this year's car show which will be taking place on the on the 5th of June uh, I'm just about done all right if Someone were moving into Berwick, what advice would you give them? I would tell them to check out the, you know, to come into the town and talk with the organizations that are attached to the town, you know, uh, where they can find that there is so much going on in the town. And of course, we're under construction this year. Uh, we're having new businesses that are going to be coming into town. So, I mean, this is uh, an all-around great time to be moving into this town. I think it's a great place to live. I've been, I've been in town now for, oh, 58 years, somewhere around that, 56 to 58 years. Get involved. That's, that's my word. Don't come in and complain about things. Get involved with them. You know, and you'll find that it's a lot better than what you think. I agree. Um, what is one thing that you would like to share today that you would like people to know? The most important thing that I would like to uh, put forward uh, and thank, I want to thank the town of Berwick. You know, first and foremost for letting, allowing me to do what I do. I guess that would be the most important thing to me. Andy, if you would just remain up here for a moment, please. I'd like to have Beth O'Connor come again, please. Thank you. This is a pleasure. So I, I can't top what just happened because that was really awesome. <laughs> but I've known Andy, his whole family, just for, since I moved here over 20 years ago. And it is such a pleasure to give you this award today. This is um, another legislative sentiment from the state of Maine. And I am just so honored and privileged because you truly are a wonderful citizen, a wonderful man who has raised a wonderful family. and 
We are all blessed to have you, and I'll read this to you. Be it known to all, we, the members of the Senate and House of Representatives, join in recognizing Andrew Lewis Buckman of Berwick, who has been named Citizen of the Year by the Town of Berwick in recognition of his many contributions to the community. We extend our congratulations and best wishes, and be it ordered that this official expression of sentiment be sent forthwith on behalf of the 130th Legislature and the people of the state of Maine. And I truly am so honored to give this to you. You're one of my favorites. <laughs> I'd like to thank each one that's come tonight. We're so honored to have each one. Uh, for the members of Post 79 that have worked so hard with uh, putting this on, we're very grateful. If you're a part of the committee, please stand. If you're a citizen of the year committee, please stand. And sorry, Go. I am. I'm coming. <laughs> We'd also um, like to recognize our volunteers tonight who have helped, and we have uh, the scouts that are here. Some of the uh, Ben Nazarene, Ben Nazarian, Ben Nazarian, who is standing right there. And I just want you to know that uh, Ben is my grandson, but he gave up his birthday to be here for this dinner with you. So it is his 18th birthday. Uh, Emery West. Patrick McPeak. <laughs> Brett Kamiski. <laughs> Garrett Edwards. <laughs> Thomas Wintle. <laughs> and also, I'd like to have all the Boy Scouts stand up. And the Scoutmaster, all you guys, thank you so much for helping clean and helping present. And I also would like, uh, especially, uh, ask Roseanne Martin to please stand. Roseanne. Colonel, Colonel Martin has worked so hard uh, since September. We began organizing this and all the other members of the committee, but Roseanne was leading the committee and uh, made all this happen. And we're so grateful for all your hard work. Um, she makes all the rest of our jobs so much easier by what she does. And a lot of it is behind the scenes. And unless you're working on the various projects, you don't realize how much she actually does. But she, it's an amazing, uh, what she does and we would like to thank also all of our honored guests that are here with us uh, department commander uh, um, beth so wonderful to have you here and um, anyone else that i fail to recognize uh, please forgive me but we're grateful tim and the firemen we're uh, so grateful to have our first responders and thank you and we also would like to recognize Berwick community media Terry Wright and uh, Ralph, and uh, let's see, anyone else from the media here? All right, so just... <laughs> so
So thank you so much. And in closing, we'd like to have our benediction. If I could uh, have Pastor Brown come back up. Please stand. Uncover. Well, what a wonderful evening this has been. And just thank you, everyone. You are a great job. So let's just bow for prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of this wonderful evening, we are thankful for all the individuals that made this evening such a grand experience. May you dismiss us in your grace, with your blessing and your protection. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Cover. Thank you all for coming. We're all set. Be careful on your way home.